about as mushy as it could get. And Papa and Mama were fussing over Tom as if he'd just returned from a long sea voyage. Frank and Alan kept blinking their eyes as their mother and father hugged and kissed them. Swen was running around, patting everybody on the back as if he was responsible for the rescue. The rest of the people were pounding each other on the back and carrying on like you never saw. My dog had made the rescue possible, and nobody was paying any attention to me. I'd ask Tom why he said he'd be out a lot of money if Frank and Alan and Lady weren't rescued. And he said it was a deal he had with the Jensens and it was none of my business. I couldn't help feeling that somehow, and in some way, I was going to end up with the short end of the deal. And oh, how I wished I had a great brain like my brother's so I could figure it out. Take your second pick, Tom. Are you going to give Tom a pup for rescuing you from Skeleton Cave? Heck no. You can't pay anybody back for saving your life, J.D. Besides, it was part of our deal before we were lost. What deal? Tom wouldn't let us make Lady with Brownie until we promised him the pick of the litter for you and a male pup for him. Mr. Moner promised to pay two dollars for each male and one dollar for each female. So long, fellas. We'll see you later, guys. When I finally learned the truth, I was so full of indignation that I thought I'd bust wide open. You cheated me. How can you say a thing like that? You got the pick of the litter, didn't you? Yeah, but you'll get two dollars. You can sell your pup for two dollars, too. I don't want to sell my pup. Then what are you griping about? I think I got cheated. Now listen to me, J.D. Let's assume I hadn't put my great brain to work. What would have happened? Brownie and Lady would have had pups, right? Right. And this pup is the pick of the litter, right? Right. Then how can you possibly say that I cheated you? I don't know, but it still sounds fishy to me. You just agreed that everything I said was right, J.D. So how can so many rights be wrong? I still say you cheated me. You know the Jensen's aren't rich. Sure, but what has that got to do with it? Well, Frank and Alan have never had a whole dollar of their own in their lives. Hadn't been for me, their father would probably given the extra pups away. Are you so selfish and jealous, J.D., that you wouldn't want poor Frank and Alan to ever have a whole dollar of their own? Gosh, no. To top it all off, you accused me, your own brother, of cheating you. I was only looking out for your best interest. show you my heart's in the right place, J.D. I'm going to treat you to a nickel's worth of candy at the ZCMI store. I'm sorry I said you cheated me. I accept your apology. On one condition. Condition? That you don't tell Mom and Pop about the deal I made with Mr. Monaire. Hello, Dr. Leroy. Won't you come in? I knew it. Swim's got the measles. You know what that means. I suspected as much. Well? It seems silly for J.D. and me to get the measles just because Swim's got them. Maybe J.D. and I are immune. If you are, we'll soon find out. But, Mama, I never get a chance to catch a disease first. It ain't fair. Isn't fair, and I don't want to hear another word.
Mama had a system when we got sick. She believed in getting us all infected with the disease at the same time and getting it over with. Give me more blood. Mama said a dark room would make our eyes feel better. But it made me sicker not seeing what was going on outside. How have all my patients been this week? Not patient. Come on in, doctor. Got his appetite back. Fever's gone. Well, I don't see why we have to have him in here with his two sick brothers. Swin, you can move back to your room now. Thanks, Mama. Come on, Swin. Bye-bye, brothers. All a part of growing up, boys. Mmm. I'm hungry. Oh, no. It's too bad you couldn't have had breakfast this morning. Mama baked your favorite sourdough biscuits, and then she fried me two big eggs with lots of crisp bacon. Mmm. Well... Have a good day, brothers. You better recover soon, or old Swin will celebrate your birthday for you. Luckily, I got better in time for my eighth birthday. That was the day Uncle Mark gave me my best birthday present ever. Even Tom thought it was pretty special. Summer finally ended. And that meant another year of school. What I didn't know is that it would be the last year we'd have Mrs. Thatcher for a teacher. She really understood kids. Andy, I want to see you after school. You're old enough to be on time. Here we go again. Frank, did you have something to show me? Frank always had something to show everybody. He was too smart for his own good. Let's see it, John. What a beauty. You want to sell it? It's not for sale. It looks like Tillite, wouldn't you say? Where's Howard? He's got the mumps. You're going to that Henderson bar with Basil and me? It's too dangerous. Most kids are chicken to come here. Chicken? Freddy cats. Bet you haven't been in a real barn before. We have barns, yes. What for? For cows and horses and chickens. Greeks have animals like us. But no Freddy cats. Just cats. Watch this. Andy. You are hurt? Take more than a little cut to hurt me. Give me a word you won't tell anyone about me. Even JD. I couldn't stop thinking about Howard having the mumps. I knew this would be my big chance to get sick first. Poor Howard. He was always reading those baby books. Howard? Infect me. If you gone crazy, I'm not sure hurt bad. 
It even hurts to talk. For once, I want to be the first one to get sick, so when I get better, I can really rub it in good. If you're a real pal, you'll give me the mumps. All right, but I still think you're nuts. Now we're in for it. Quick, under the bed. 